Good morning students. Today we are going to learn plus 2 chapter. Before going to learn about that, we know that we have different type of a life process among them digestion, respiration, excretion, transportation etc. If anybody asks you a question that which life process helpful to continuation of the life, then undoubtedly without hesitation we can say that reproduction. So, today we are going to learn about reproduction in organisms. what is reproduction okay before going to know about the reproduction first of all from this chapter we will get two questions one to two questions in the neat examination now let us see what is reproduction reproduction an organism produces the young ones it is a biological process and one of the important process for the continuation of the life. In this chapter, the first concept is life span. What is life span? The period from birth to natural death of an organism. The period from birth to natural death of an organism is called as lifespan. In this planet, there are different type of organisms are there, different species are there. All the species and all the organisms may not have the same lifespan. Some of the living organisms in few hours, their lifespan will be completed. Some of the living organisms in 100 years, 1000 years also present. So, now let us see some of the life spans of different organisms. If you see in that first I am writing here organism and its life span. So, here I am writing microorganisms as a M O S microorganisms its lifespan few minutes to few hours okay a may fly one day fruit fly one month butterfly one to two weeks next rice four months wheat 5 months these two complete their lifespan in a year so that these two are called as a annuals likewise even if you take a carrot and a radish such type of the plants they can complete their lifespan in 2 years so that those we are calling as a biennials those we are calling as biennials Whereas, if you take uh, some of the organisms like rat 4 years, rose bush that is 10 years, rabbit 
continuous grow 15 years cow 25 years dog 25 years monkey 26 years next uh, cat 35 to 40 years if you take horse Fifty years, whereas crocodile fifty to sixty years. Elephant sixty to seventy five years, Eagle ninety years, then Sequio dendron semperverensi. It is a redwood tree. It can able to live. 3000 to 4000 years. Next, Laria Trident Theta. It is one of the oldest tree which is existed on the earth. As per the information so far, which lives in United States of America in California that is about 11,300 years and a parrot 140 years whereas gained tortoise turtles are tortoise that is 150 years, whale 37 years, etc. Like that, we can be able to take uh, many examples. You may get out, these all are needed as uh, to learn or to remember. Yes, why? Because here, based on the lifespan, the question will be given in the neat uh, ascending order to descending order. Which of the following is correct? Which of the following is wrong? Here, for example, here eagle 90 years is given. Then if it is given 10 years, which of the following is wrong? 10 years is given means you can be able to tick that option. So that is the reason why ascending order to descending order, which of the following is correct and which of the following is wrong. So that is the reason why it is very, very important to learn all the years of the different living organisms lifespan. Now let us see the correlation of the lifespan with its size and complexity. Yes, there is no correlation with size and complexity of the living organism with lifespan. Here, how can we understand this statement? For example, there is a mango tree and a people tree. See, mango tree and people tree size, occupation and complexity almost might be the same. But the mango tree lifespan when you see it is uh, 200 years. Whereas people tree lifespan when you see it is about uh, 2000 to 3000 years. 
So there is a much variations, hundreds, thousands of the variation is present uh, when we compare to the lifespan of uh, this mango tree and uh, people tree. Might be their size, their complexity, their distribution on the earth might be the same, but the lifespan is different. So this is one example related to the plant. Let us see about the animals example. In this uh, regard, I am going to take crow and parrot. These two just know whatever we have seen in the lifespan, these two are mentioned. So, crow, 15 years, parrot, 140 years. So, here also we can imagine. So, the complexity or the size of the organism, crow and parrot might be same almost, but their lifespan is different. So, in this way we have to understand all the living organisms may not possess the same lifespan that is one point another one is the complexity and size if you see these two aspects there is no correlation with the size of the organism to the lifespan then what are the stages are present in the lifespan let us see what are the stages of the lifespan if you see the stages of the lifespan, the first one is juvenile stage, second one is reproductive stage, third one is senescence stage. See juvenile stage it is also called as pre-reproductive stage what do you call them it is called as a pre-reproductive stage in the juvenile stage what will be taken place growth of the organism will be taken place the end of the juvenile stage the plant will be developed reproductive wise the end of the juvenile stage the plants enter into the reproductive stage but whereas animals uh, they attain reproductive nature now let us see about the reproductive phase in the reproductive stage what happens the maturity organisms will get mature in this phase maturity of the organism can be seen and also here sex organs will be developed Completely the development of the sex organs also we can see in the reproductive phase. If you see higher organisms in uh, especially in the plants when you see the flower blooming, pollination, such type of all the things you can able to see in the reproductive phase. Next, uh, senescence stage. Deterioration of the cell means metabolic actions comes down. metabolic actions comes down whenever the metabolic actions come down the function of the cell the function of the cell in the cell whatever the functions are there they are not performed well so now the structure of the cell will be less means it will become into the shrunken like that so due to that what happens here whenever the metabolic actions are coming down then what happens here the organism no longer it can be able to perform well that is the reason why ultimately it leads to death of an organism this is about a lifespan so we have seen now different lifespans as well as the correlation with the lifespan and what are the phases of the lifespan now let us see about the reproduction Yes, reproduction, it is a important and a biological process, important and biological process 
an organism produces young ones organism produces young ones young ones are offspring are daughter cell or else new individuals okay these all are same in the question sometimes young ones will be given sometimes offspring will be given sometimes daughter cells will be given sometimes new individual will be given so these all are getting from the pre existed organism so what is reproduction an organism producing the young ones that is called as a reproduction here in the it is a very very important and biological life process okay then here what is the purpose what is the purpose of reproduction the purpose of the reproduction when we take here continuity of the life first first and foremost thing is continuity of life perpetuation of the life continuation of the life if there is no reproduction there is no species on this planet due to the reproduction only all the all the living organisms extending their generations to generations next population their species population increasing due to the reproduction only it is one of the important uh, life process without reproduction we cannot expect uh, a new generation or new life and last one very very important one is through the reproduction it is possible to see variations what is variations variations means different characters are acquiring from one generations to another generation for example if you take uh, your parents and to you whatever the characters of the your parents that may be possessed to you and your siblings along those characters you may acquire different new characters those new characters we are calling as a variations so that is the reason why reproduction is very very important for the acquiring of the new characters now here what we have learnt what is reproduction and what is the purpose of the reproduction here next we are going to learn about uh, types of reproduction there are two types of reproduction are there mainly one is asexual reproduction another one is sexual reproduction what is asexual reproduction here in the asexual reproduction when we see single parent involvement will be seen only one parent through the single parent new individuals will be obtained okay single parent means only one parent involved in the production of the new organisms new individuals offsprings or the daughter cell that is the reason why asexual reproduction is called as uniparental very very important asexual reproduction is called as uniparental next <coughs> just i am writing here this i am continuing here the second point of the asexual reproduction here no gamete formation no gamete formation we don't see the formation of the gamete in the asexual reproduction when there is no gamete formation then no fusion when there is no fusion then there is no fertilization 
when there is no fusion there is no fertilization see when there is no gamete formation what happens no fusion is taking place then no fertilization then what type of the cell division will be where it will be taken place here it will be taken place in somatic cells or else uh, body cells okay and uh, what type of the cell division will be taken place mitotic cell division will be taken place here listen carefully here no gamete formation is taking place no gamete formation means i am writing here a gamo genesis a gamo genesis what is the literary meaning of this term a means absent gamo means gamete genesis means production absence of the gamete production what is it what is the meaning of this term means without fusion or without formation of the gamete a new individual we are obtaining that is the reason why this process is called as a a gametogenesis next what type of the reproduction is this one here what what type of the cell division is there mitotic cell division where does it takes place somatic cells so our body cells so that is the reason why this is called as a somatogenic reproduction so we have learnt here two terms one is a gametogenesis another one is somatogenic reproduction so got it all of you asexual reproduction first one is a single parent and uniparental second one is there is no formation of the gamete fusion of the gamete and fertilization fertilization also will not be taken place and somatic cells involving here these are also called as a body cells and mitotic cell division is taking place that is the reason why it is called as a somatogenic reproduction then after continuation to the asexual reproduction only here the next point when we see here these are nothing but characteristics of the asexual reproduction if a new individual i'll write here this is the parental one next uh, here it is a b this is the daughter this is also daughter means from the parental one parental one what we are getting we are getting two daughter cells or else two progeny we are getting new individual we are getting two new individuals we are getting okay when we see like that here these two individuals morphologically and genetically same morphological and genetical these two will be identical as well as what do you call it? identical is something but same b and c these two are the new individuals these two new individuals after asexual reproduction when you see these two morphologically as well as genetically same not only these two individuals even parent also same even parent also same so through the asexual reproduction when we got a new individuals these two individuals uh, as well as parent i am clearly telling these two individuals as well as the parent one both are morphologically genetically identical or same such type of the group we are calling as a clones what do we call them clones then you may get doubt whatever the asexual reproduction occur wherever the asexual reproduction occur do we get the clones no some of the exceptions are there that will be discussed in further classes so little for your knowledge i am telling budding do remember budding in the budding the size of the organism 
of the parent and the young ones will not be same. So that is the reason of there we cannot call them as a clone. Why? Because morphologically parental one is the bigger and uh, uh, daughter one is the smaller. So some of the exception points are there. When it comes, I'll explain there itself. So you have to remember it is a very, very important point. Clone, what is clone? Morphologically, genetically, the young ones as well as the parent one, both are same means that is called as a clone. Next, occurrence. Occurrence means where does it takes place? Where do you observe the asexual reproduction? Where do you observe? In single celled organisms, we can able to see this one. In single celled organisms, what are the examples? For example, if you take that is Monera, Protista. In Monera, what is example? Bacteria. Protista, Amoeba. Okay. Amoeba, Paramecium, Euglena, those when you observe, those you can see the asexual mode of reproduction. Even not only here, in the lower organisms, lower organisms means here, what are the lower organisms? Just I am denoting here one is algae, another one is fungi. These two consisting of a thallus organization, so that they have kept under the thallophyta. Okay, so these are the lower organisms. In this, we can able to see asexual mode of reproduction. Even higher organisms, higher organisms means highly developed organisms in the plants. When you see the gymnosperms and angiosperms, especially when you observe in angiosperms in angiosperms what happen the flower will be throw the here flower but flower is a sexual it is it performs a sexual reproduction in angiosperms what happens the plant body when you take here root leaf stem throw this vegetative propagation what will be taken place So this vegetative propagation will be taken place. So this is the occurrence, single celled organism we can able to see the asexual mode of reproduction, lower organisms like algae and fungi, higher organisms even angiosperms if you take also here root, leaf, stem, these are the vegetative parts, through them vegetative propagation will be taken place. Next uh, let us see what are the different types of asexual mode of reproduction. Yes. What are the different methods or different types? Then first and foremost one is fission. Second one is budding. Third one is Fragmentation. Fourth one is Gemma cups, Gemma formation. Fifth one is Regeneration. Sixth one is Pore formation. So these are different methods or different modes of the asexual reproduction. So let us see. So how many are there? There are almost six are there. Fission, budding, fragmentation, gemma formation and uh, regeneration and spore formation. Now first I am going to explain about the fission.
fission in the latin language fission means it is a cleft fission means it is a cleft there are different types of the divisions are there among them here binary fission and multiple fission what are the two types here binary fission okay and the next one multiple fission yes again in the binary fission based on the plane of division transverse longitudinal simple or irregular divisions are there first let us see what is binary fission binary fission means here parent organism or the organisms divides into two or it produces two organisms for example this is one organism this organisms divides gives uh, two individuals it gives two individuals so how many we got from one cell we got the two cell so by means two fission means division after the division how many we got two cells two individuals two progeny we got so this is the binary fission so based on the plane of division based on the plane of division transfer division longitudinal division irregular division so so far we are learning that division 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 what division will be taken place here mitotic cell division will be taken place and uh, two daughter cells or progeny will be formed okay next here binary fusion based on the plane of division there are three types are present based on the plane of division one is simple fusion or else it is also called as a irregular next one is longitudinal next one transverse division okay so let us see first uh, simple then after longitudinal then after transverse division so what is the first one here simple or irregular division then what are the different examples for the binary fission if you take that amoeba paramecium and euglena amoeba simple or irregular division example whereas longitudinal if you take euglena whereas transverse division if you take a paramecium so first we are going to learn about the irregular one so that is the reason why amoeba so for example this is a amoeba the dotted part the dotted part what i am drawing this is a just imagine as a plasma membrane so this is the plasma membrane now nucleus is present what do you call this one nucleus vacuole pseudopodia okay okay already we just now we have seen binary fission takes place through the mitotic cell division in mitotic cell division how many steps will be present p mat in mitosis what are present mitosis in plus 1 we have learned cell cycle cell division okay in this what we have learned prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase prophase metaphase 
anaphase and telophase. Let us assume this amoeba is in interface. This is in interface. Interface after mitosis that is the prophase. In the prophase of the amoeba when you see prophase of the amoeba when you see here the condensed chromosome will be present. Cell organelles will be disappeared. Already we learnt in plus 1 the cell organelles will be disappeared. So, this is prophase. Next. Metaphase. Metaphase of the amoeba when you see what happens here? Here chromosomes lie at the equator. Chromosome lie at the equator. Where in which phase? That is metaphase. Next anaphase. Anaphase what happens? See here the chromosome are lie at the equator at the middle point, but here the chromosomes are pulled towards the poles. Here it is a middle, but here chromosomes are pulled towards the pole. Here also chromosomes are pulled towards the pole. So, this is anaphase. Okay. In the next uh, telophase, what happens? You know. In the telophase, it will be gone this side and it will be gone this side. So, that, that is the reason why the chromosome or nucleus will be formed this side and this side also one nucleus will be formed. So, which phase this is? This is the telophase at the last. So, now so far what has completed? Nuclear division is completed. Nuclear division, what we are calling nuclear division? Karyokinesis. So far nuclear division is taken place that is the reason why we are calling as a karyokinesis. Now karyokinesis is completed. Then after what happens cytokinesis means here cytoplast. What is cytokinesis? Cytoplast will be divided. So due to the cytoplast division what happens here? Two separate amoeba will be formed after the cytokinesis two separate amoeba will be formed. Now see how many amoebas are formed this is one and this is the two. Okay. Then here first interface of division when you take only one amoeba is present but at final how many we got two. This example we learnt under the binary fission of the SXL mode of reproduction. What is asexual reproduction? Uniparental, only one parent involved. There is no fusion of the gamete. I said there are two individuals are forming, two individuals. Mitosis cell division, through the mitosis cell division only I have explained. So, all the characteristics of the asexual reproduction, what we have dis discussed, those all are satisfying with this example. One single parent, then two we got. Okay. Next, fusion of the gametes is not taken place. Mitosis cell division and two cells, two young ones, two daughter cells. So, this is about a binary fission, irregular mode of binary fission or it is also called as a simple binary fission. Okay. Next, uh, let us see longitudinal binary fission.
what is the example for the longitudinal binary fusion the example is euglena So the euglena, when you observe here, flagella is present. What do you call this one? This is the flagella. Then again, this part is a basal body. What do we call? Basal body. Next, uh, this is the nucleus. Okay. In the next step of the euglena, when you observe, Yes, this is one basal body. Yes, here this is the first step, this is the second step. In the second step of the euglena division, when you observe, First, here only one basal body is present. Here, how many basal bodies are present? Two, one and two. So, before it goes to divide into two, first it divides the basal body. Why? Because as it comes out as a two, it has to be moved from one place to another place. That is the reason why the locomotory organ is the flagella. First, it divides the flagella, basal body. Meanwhile, what happens, whatever the nucleus is there, that will be divided into two. So, now what has happened? Basal body or flagella. What we got? Two flagella we got as well as nucleus also divided. Nucleus also divided. Karyokinesis is taken place. Second step is very, very important. Then what has to be occur if now? The body has to be divided into two. Then what happens here? Basal body is divided already. So this is one, this is one two flagella and one nucleus this side, another nucleus this side. So here longitudinally the division cytokinesis will be taken place due to that what happens? Uh, this will be grown as uh, one euglena and uh, this will be grown as a uh, another euglena. So now how many euglenas we got? This is one euglena and this is another euglena. From the single euglena, how many we got? Two euglenas we got. That is the reason why it is a an example for the binary fission. Here, here also, are you observing anywhere that fusion of the gametes? No. Fertilization? No. Then single parent produces two. Then division is taking place. Okay. So th this is the example for the longitudinal binary fusion which we have learnt uh, in the euglena. Next, uh, let us see in transverse binary fission.
transverse binary fission. Transverse binary fission we are learning in the paramecium. Paramecium is a slipper animalcule. Why? Because it looks like a slipper that is the reason why it is also called as a slipper animalcule. Let us see the paramecium. Okay. Around the paramecium what are present? Locomotory organs are present. These locomotory organs are called as a cilia, small hair like structures which are present around the paramecium. These are called as a cilia and also their anterior side, anterior vacuole and posterior. Next two vacuoles are present and two contractile vacuoles also present and one mega nucleus and another one is one micronucleus is present along with that cytopharynx. Cytopharynx is present. Then remaining part is cytoplasm. So, if you label that this is the cilia, what do you call? This is the posterior vacuole, this is anterior vacuole. Next, these are contractile. These are cytopharynx. Yes. Now, in the second step, yes, in the second step, what happens here? Mega nucleus, what is that? Mega nucleus undergoes a mitosis cell division and a micronucleus. Micronucleus undergoes into mitosis cell division. This is very, very important. Where even in the longitudinal section or longitudinal division of the euglena also second step important here also second step why because here in the second step mega nucleus divides into a mitosis and micronucleus divides into mitosis cell division but whereas there basal body flagella dividing into two in the second step so in the transverse binary fusion or longitudinal binary fusion second step is very very important some of the exception are important to points are there in that that is the reason why you have to remember more in the second step of the binary fusion in transverse section as well as longitudinal section what happens here mega nucleus extends means increases like this then after this two contractile vacuole, one will be gone this side, another will be gone this side. Next, cytopharynx also it moves, one will be due to the division here also. Then here anterior vacuole, here posterior vacuole. I am not drawing the cilia, why? Because all the parts of the paramecium already I have written. Uh, so, need not to label here in every diagram. Next, here one micronucleus is present. Okay. Next. In the next step what happens here? Now what has happened? Karyokinesis it will be divided. Karyokinesis will be taken place. But that will be seen diagrammatically in this diagram. So what happens here? This is the cytoplast division. So whatever the cytoplast is present, this will be bifurcated in the next step. Due to that this mega nucleus moves this side and, and this side. Here also one micronucleus, here one micronucleus. Then anterior posterior vacuoles, anterior posterior vacuoles. Next what do you get? One cytopharynx and another cytopharynx. Then cytoplasm as well as cilia. Then this will be separately grown up in the next step what happens this will be separately grown up see the first step the first only single paramecium now we got a two paramecians after the binary fission what type of the binary fission this is the transverse binary fission what type of the binary fission transverse 
binary fission. So, 2 got through the division only, there is no uh, fusion of the gametes and fertilization is also not taking place. So, that this comes under the examples of the asexual mode of reproduction. Next, uh, multiple fission. In the fission, there are two types already we have discussed. What are the two types? One is binary fission, another one is multiple fission. So far in the binary fission, how many we learnt? Three learnt. What is the first one? Simple binary fission or irregular binary fission, amoeba. Next, what did we learn? Longitudinal. What did we learn? Longitudinal binary fission in the euglena. Third one, what did we learn? Transverse binary fission that is in the paramecium. Now, we are going to learn about multiple fission. What is multiple fission? Here also, we are going to learn about amoeba only. Yes. In amoeba, the diagram of the amoeba, if you see, it is a regular structure. This is the nucleus. Whenever unfavorable conditions are arose during the time of the unfavorable conditions, what happens? This amoeba withdraw pseudopodia. It withdraw pseudopodia. After withdrawing the pseudopodia, it forms three layer of cell wall which is in thick in condition that is called as a cyst that is called as a cyst. This process is called as a encystation. So, now let us see that one in the form of a diagram. So, what we have written? It will withdraw pseudopodia. pseudopodia will be vanished, disappeared. Then what will be happen? Three layer cell wall which is in thick. So, first uh, I am drawing the nucleus. This is the nucleus. Next, here three layered. This is the first. This is the second. This is the third. Yes. So, pseudopodia we cannot see in this diagram why because withdrawn. Next three layered wall thick wall is formed. Now, this is called as a cyst. The process of formation of the cyst is called as encystation. This phase is called encystation phase. Okay. Now, here what happens when when do you observe this stage during the time of the unfavorable conditions? When the conditions are favored, when the conditions written back that is in favorable conditions, during the time of the favorable conditions, what happens during the time of the favorable conditions? Slowly here the thick cell wall will be ruptured the thick cell walls will be ruptured, nucleus will be multiplied means many nucleus. So, I am writing here cell wall ruptured. Next, what happens cell wall rupture after multiple divisions in the nucleus. multiple divisions in the nucleus will be taken place. Then these all multiple nucleus are nuclei. Why? Because many know that is the reason why we are writing as a nuclei. So, these multiple nuclei are nucleus. What happens? They enter into the medium. They enter into the medium. So, how it will be? These are the multiple nucleus. Okay. Then, just I am drawing 
this is a ruptured cell wall to make you to understand it is a ruptured cell wall means rupturing then after what happens here they are releasing into the medium they are releasing into the medium whenever the still favorable conditions are there then it breaks then each nucleus will be developed as a each nucleus develop as a amoeba okay so now how many here six are there or nine are there each one will be come outside and still favorable conditions are continued then each one will become as a one amoeba so this is multiple fission even uh, you might have learned in the uh, malaria parasite uh, that is plasmodium here shijant to the merozoites shijant will be only one will be that uh, even merozoites will be released plenty many so that is also example for the multiple fission okay so this is the example for multiple fission now we have completed two one is uh, binary fission and uh, multiple fission these two we learnt under the fission now let us see about the budding the next is, next one is a budding second one is budding yeah this will be continued in my next class